Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. On today's Dina Does, we're doing our Q&A with my daughter, Lexi. We just finished arguing over the color of this. So now it just changed. This is what happens with mother and daughter. She thinks we look gray and washed out, but this is... The viewers will tell you the image quality is terrible. It is. I, you know it is. <laughs> but it's always the, this way. I don't know what you want me to say. Okay. Welcome to mother and daughter relationship. We asked you guys questions for us. We got plenty of questions um, in, a lot of them pertaining to um, obviously our relationship, some of them housewives, a lot of them about beauty. So let's just dive into it. Should we it, start Lex? over? Why? No. Why? You should give an introduction. I did. No, you didn't. <laughs> did. This no. is fine. This is a, this is what it is, a natural conversation. We're not overproduced. I say that every time. Maybe not on camera, but I say that before we go and film with people, but now it's just you and I on a Sunday afternoon in my room. room. Okay. So do you want to start with housewife questions? Do you want to just go all over the place? Do you want to just go as they came in? That's up to you, hostess. Okay. Let's start with how they came in backwards to forwards. How is Luke and do you guys still have a relationship with him? I would say Luke is thriving. Yes, he is thriving in yeah, Ireland. In Ireland, he's skinny as ever. He's in a happy relationship. He's got a bald cat. Hairless cat. Taking the um, lineage of the wrinkles and he has poppy wrinkles. We mm. had grandma wrinkles, Botox wrinkles. Botox wrinkles and now he has poppy wrinkles so yes we always talk to him Luke is Lexi's brother he always will be mine. I wish he could come and visit more but Ireland is very far away it is but we love him and he's doing great hi Luke shout out Luke um Lexi this goes really deep what do you think your soul's life purpose is to do here on earth oh god I don't know I really don't know I don't think anybody knows that exact answer um, you know it's funny I was just in Mexico and while everyone was partying I would kind of go off on my own and um Dave had asked a driver to walk me around town so I wasn't kidnapped and he we were walking and he looked at me and he said have you found your life's purpose and he wasn't like trying to sell me like a Jehovah's jo what do you say Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witness, Witness or <laughs> pamphlet or anything he just looked at me and asked me that question and I'm like I think I think I have yeah but you're in your 20s. I think that's what your 20s is all about, is figuring out who you are. Sometimes I think my life's purpose will come to me once I have children. Like my life's purpose may be to be a mother, but I don't know that yet. I don't, I don't know anything yet. Yeah. I mean, that's what I said. I think being 20 something and 50 something, I don't think you really know who you are. What's we, your life purpose? I mean, I think we're doing it right now. Podcasting? I, not specifically podcasting, but sharing the things that help me heal and help me grow. You know, I have access to a lot of amazing people in my life and have the ability to like do this full time is like soul search full time. So for me to be able to share it with others who may not have access to certain doctors or healers or thought process because they're working full time jobs that are their life's purpose too, you know, mm -hmm. teachers and all of that. So I think profit. Profit? You're a profit. Oh, I think so for profit. I'm like, this costs me money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying you're a profit. Ish. I think we all are profits in our own way. <laughs> like I said, like a musician is a profit. A teacher is a profit. A jewelry maker is a profit. We all share our own journey through our passions. And that's um, life's purpose. So I think, Lexi, you are doing yours as you're, as it's becoming more clear. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> we're going to skip that question. Um, we're going to skip that one only because we don't want to get into negative stuff here. Um, when you went to college, did a lot of people recognize you from Real Housewives? Mm. I've never had an overwhelming amount of people recognize me. I would say probably the most people in the history of Housewives recognize me because it was going on actively and I looked the same 
Yeah. Now only people recognize you from Instagram if they follow you because you yeah. do look totally different. Lexi, unfortunately, had to go through her awkward stage on national TV. I did um, not get any plastic surgery. No. Although everybody thinks. Yes, yeah, so we can clear that up. No yeah, nose job, nothing. no nothing. She had her lips done maybe four years ago. Yeah. And it was a disaster and we Never had to get again. it reversed. Yeah. We went to like the, the guy in Beverly Hills and he was not the guy. He screwed up my Botox and her. I just think also in general, like a PSA, people should not get their lips done because it filler to me is very scary because it can create scar tissue that you can never get rid of in lumps. And I think filler is on its way out. I see more and more people getting it reversed. Um, I haven't gotten filler in six years um, and I used to get it in my cheeks, but we discussed that already. Um, but I think it's on its way out. I think people are seeing that it migrates and yeah, it's not it migrates a good thing. And also it doesn't dissolve as fast as they say it does. Everybody metabolizes differently. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, advice to a girl leaving college. I mean, I feel like I get this question a lot on my Instagram and it's like college feels like it was so long ago for me. It was four years ago. Yeah, a lot of people still um, think you're in college. I know. Let's just set that yeah, record straight. I'm 26. <laughs> I graduated college four years ago. I didn't even go to my graduation. I don't really even feel like I went to college. Well, because you went to Ford, and let's clear that up. She went to Ford and Lincoln Center, and Lincoln Center um, wasn't like the campus that's in the Bronx. That's like more of a like football yeah. Raha I kind of thing. I took a lot of night classes. I worked you know, the last three years of, of college. So I was just kind of going to class and working more working than class. So it didn't feel like a real college experience. It felt like a time in New York where she was learning shit. And we also want to clear this up as well, because Lexi shared something. We just came back from a little mother daughter weekend in um, Ojai. And, you know, you were saying how a lot of people feel like they have access to your energy in a negative way um, Mm -hmm. and share one of the comments that you shared with me. Now, here we are on a mother daughter trip together. Like we went to Patina farm. It was so sweet and so nice. You know, we stayed in. I mean, I can pull up the exact message. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's more just people thinking they have a right to, to, to say nasty things to you online really just blows my mind. Um, I mean, for the most part, I think we get very beautiful people. Yeah. We have her followers. Go ahead. But this person said, it must be nice to be almost 30 and still using your parents' credit card. One, I'm not almost 30. (laughs) I have four years to go. That's very rude. Okay. Two, I wish I was using my parents' credit card, (laughs) but I am very, um, if anything, I'm flattered that they think I present myself in such a way that I have millions of dollars. Yeah. So I'm the (laughs) type of mom and it may not work for me right now because especially living where Lexi lives, you know, in the Beverly Hills area, a lot of kids are still living on their parents' dime. And even if, you know, they're out on their own, they still have a credit card. Lexi never had my credit card, not once. No. And I always had jobs. Yeah. She's literally been working since she's 16. First job, of course, she worked at a boutique and she spent her entire paycheck back at the boutique. <laughs> yeah, that's no one's business. saying that I'm a good spender. <laughs> um, maybe that's why I come off like I have more than I do because I spend it all on my closet. Yeah, probably. But um, we've helped Lexi. I've helped Lexi, of course, like get into her cars and but she's always paid the payment and the insurance. Um, I made you a deal you couldn't refuse moving to California, where if you moved here, I would help you get into your apartment, just meaning like first month's rent, but then you took over. Yeah. If anything, you like you and Dave have been helpful with like, you know, when I got out of college and I moved to LA, I had a styling job that ma- I needed to have a car and I didn't have the money to put down payment for a car, but I had enough to pay it off every month. But like, I didn't have like you know, I paid for myself to move across the country, which was a lot of money to ship all my things from New York. And I also did pay for my apartment getting into that because I had a roommate, it was manageable. But, you know, I didn't have like $4,000 in cash to just throw into putting a down payment on a car. You know, that it's more valuable to me in my bank account at that time when I have to like pay rent and things like that. So we help her along the way because I think the greatest gift that you can give your children 
is not um, just throwing money at them, but showing them that they could do it themselves and giving them the self-confidence to really conquer, you know, life and all the challenges. And, you know, a lot of people in my own world, my family, I'm the youngest of 11 children. So I watched everyone raise their kids differently. And the one who kind of raised them, their kids with that mentality of like, we're here as your security net, but, you know, I want to see you do it on your own. I just see that those people thriving in their lives and happy. And even though, you know, they're not driving, you know, Rolls Royce or whatever, they're just proud of their accomplishments because they did it on their own. And I wanted to do that for Lexi. And she knows she'll never be thrown out of an apartment or not have a car because we're here as a safety net. But I want her to know that she could do it on her own. And she, that's what I believe in her, that she can do this and she doesn't need someone to save her. So that's what I try to instill in her. So no, she does not have my no. credit card. She doesn't. She's a spendaholic. I am, I'm a shopaholic, <laughs> primarily clothing and items that pertain to my style. But at the same time, like I'm not where I would want to be financially in life. I obviously wish I could buy a house and things like that. But, you know, I do have technically two jobs. So I am able to support myself with LA's very expensive. Everyone's rent poor in LA, in my opinion. It's like half of what I make in a month goes right towards my rent, which is insane. Well, I think that that's happening everywhere in this world right now, but especially you live in West Hollywood, which is, yeah. you know, everyone wants to be in West Hollywood because it's the place to be in LA, especially when you're young. I always tell her, I'm like, move out to Orange County. It won't be that expensive, but she's like, no, thank you. No, but I did get lucky moving in pre-COVID because, you know, I'm rent controlled and rents are even higher now. So that goes on to one of the questions that came in is like, what do you do for a living, Lexi? Me? <laughs> I sell feet pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does sound like a good idea though. <laughs> I um, obviously have my jewelry business, Shop New, shopnew.com, which mm -hmm. I've been doing for almost four years now, which is crazy to think about. Um, it's just a curation of jewelry that I love, jewelry that I've designed. You know, it's primarily affordable and it's fun. And a lot of it is, you know, intention based where it's evil eyes and hamsas and things like that, because I always grew up wearing those kind of tokens of protection being Greek, you know, it was always kind of like a tradition of mine to have an eye on everything or ladybug or, you know, those kind of things. So for summer, I would say the biggest thing is anklets. The mm -hmm. anklets are the big seller and I have a lot of fun eye anklets and chain anklets. And then my day job is I work for an interior designer. I do marketing for her. Her name is Sarah Solis. She's so talented. I love her. I couldn't ask for a better boss. Like she really champions my own business, which is really valuable to me because I've been in situations before where I've kind of held myself back because I felt like I was cheating on my job, you know? but she's so supportive. She gives me, you know, freedom with my time. And it's just really rewarding. I have to say going from working from a company, a large scale company with products, you know, pushing products to champion, championing, is that a word? Mm -hmm. For yes, somebody's um, personal success. Like I really, really want her to win and being a part of her marketing and PR team. It's just like, it's so rewarding to see her get these, you know, moments of professional acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Yeah. Yeah. And she has a beautiful aesthetic. I love her. Aesthetic. She's so talented. I really love her. And it, it's funny because your mom was an interior designer for many years. And yeah. since birth, you literally went to, you, know, you don't remember, but you came with me to design. You, you stayed the one store that I worked in while I was going through a divorce with your dad. Um, you would, we were there in the playpen at the store in the back room. And then when I went on to jobs, you were there with me in the back seat, keeping you busy. And I have one funny story that I'll share is I was doing this big presentation once and I was so nervous. And here I am, I had to bring my toddler with me on the presentation and I was like I had to make up that morning that the babysitter canceled but I didn't want to disappoint her meanwhile that you just came with me on all the jobs and 
you just started to walk and you were like kind of waddling around. It was a big empty great room we were sitting in. So the client and I were sitting at on chairs and all of a sudden I couldn't find you. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is so professional. I can't believe this. I can't find it. And I found you behind the one chair in the room taking a poop. <laughs> and you were like, oh. Oh, and your face is bright red. That's you so had a sad. diaper on it all, but she thought it was so <laughs> endearing and so funny. I did get the job, but um, yeah, you came with me from day one and I always wanted you to get into design and you were like, no, no, no. But that's, you had to figure that out for yourself. I mean, obviously you do love it. You love. Yeah, I love it and I can appreciate it. But now working with Sarah, it, it there's so much work that yeah, goes into stressful. it. And like, you have to be so knowledgeable like I, I I couldn't do it well, like I really couldn't you could first of all you could do anything no but you I, I would to. be so overwhelmed like it's definitely is something you have to be naturally well I do at. think you have a natural eye as I do um you know you have a natural eye for scale and color and just like a pleasing um you know aesthetic for for what to put with what but in today's design world is completely different than I was designing because now you have everything is on computer and you have to know all these technical, the technical end of things. It's not just like, you know, I'm, I'm so old fashioned. I still like draw out a room <laughs> uh, yeah. with my hand and that's not how you do it anymore. You do it all on computer and I'm tech challenged. And I think you're not as tech challenges. It's just like, I've learned through this experience being an interior decorator and interior designer are two very different things. Yeah. Very yeah. different. One is very technical. The other yeah. one is just like. To be an interior designer, you really have to be well educated and know like the ins and outs of building and. Time periods. All, yeah. It's really impressive. It is. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Um, um, how's college going, Lexi? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sure. <laughs> favorite memory of doing the show and any regrets about it I really I really don't have a favorite memory you I let you watch it now and laugh at it like you were showing no your no, no I don't laugh I cringe <laughs> but I would say favorite memory there's no specific moment in which I look back and like I'm like oh I love that moment but I did love the crew whether yeah. it was season one or season, what was it, eight or whatever, six. six, the crew was always really pleasant and like family. And I always enjoyed when they would come around and spending time with them. Yeah. And then that's, that's the thing about filming that show is you get super close with these people. So you feel comfortable to really be yourself. And then all of a sudden, like there are times they're just doing their job, but it hurts, you know? So you get yeah. like personally insulted that they did something that might, you know, compromise the situation or whatever it's it's an interesting dynamic for sure what do you guys have most in common I would say our, we have very common interests like we like the same things you know we can spend a weekend in Santa Barbara and want to go to the same stores and look at the same things yeah I agree for sure um and what do you like to do for fun that's such a weird question I mean, I think we just did it, spending the weekend in Santa Barbara, going to the farm and- For fun, yeah, I don't know. You, you didn't have fun? No, but like fun is a weird word. I thought it was fun. We ate cookies at night. <laughs> what do you do for fun? Well, I think, let's, so let's answer both ways. What do you do with me for fun versus what do you do with you for fun? I don't know. Fun feels weird. Like, I, I don't think I've ever thought about what I do for fun. Uh, to me, fun feels like a night out with friends. Okay. Like being intentionally, trying to intentionally have fun. Like that. For for us, it would be like, plan. how do you spend time together? How do you like to spend time together? I don't know. Fun is the word. Okay. I'm thinking too deeply about yeah, this. Yeah, you are. Um, what inspires you about your mom? Um, her easy living. She lives very intentional. You know, when I stay here, there's like shaman music blasting through the house from the hours of 10 to 12. Um, but I actually liked the music she was playing today. Everything's just very intentional. And I can appreciate that there's a reason behind everything you do. Certainly is. And the next question is, are you also spiritual? Not as spiritual as you. 
I don't know. Why don't you answer that? I think you are. I think you fight it a little because I'm rational. Yeah, I mean, it has a lot to do. You're an Aquarius and Aquarius always have to rationalize things. And like, um, also there's a mother daughter dynamic that what your mother does isn't cool until you figure it out for yourself. I think that goes with anything a mother and daughter do. Like I, it's very rare that I see a young girl once, once you hit 30 and you start coming into your own and you respect a little bit more interest in why they are. Um, it's kind of like, ill. that's my mom's thing. You know, I don't feel like that though, because no. you weren't always like this. I wasn't always spiritual. Not like this. No, no, I've I've leveled up for sure, but I've always. I mean, you grew up with. No, I just and... think I take from it what I want from it. Like I don't indulge in the whole yeah lifestyle practice. Yeah, like to me, it's my life. Like yeah. I said, like my life is self growth and diving into every modality of healing and spirituality. I don't think that that's something that you, you know, will ever do, but you yeah. do take from it. Yeah, like I take, you. yeah, pieces of it. Yeah, but you certainly grew up that way. Again, not as, I'm not saying that I've always been this much into it now. I'm like doing the deep dive. But um, I remember you going off to college and being like, mom, there's like all these girls are knocking on my door to pull cards yeah, for them. <laughs> but I feel like that's when you really got into it more was like yeah. when I was going in college, but not growing up. It was weird because I went to Catholic schools my whole life. Yeah. So it was very God-based, even though we weren't like a religious family. Like even in the notes that I would write you when I was a kid, I'd be like, I'm sorry, God. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was Catholic school for sure. Yeah. And I put you in Catholic school for stability, not really for, because I mean, I've talked about my religion before. Um, it was because I was a single mom and we were like, I didn't know where I was going to live. At least Catholic school kept you in a school system rather than pulling you all over yeah. as we moved. So that's that was the reason be, behind my decision of Catholic school. But yeah, I mean, obviously you pulled from it some religious things, but. I'm not very religious today though. No, neither am I. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you miss about Luke? Everything. He's so funny. We were just theoretically talking about the day I get married and I'm like, who would give a speech? I'm like, oh, definitely Luke because he would, he would cry and make it a whole thing and it would be really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Luke the, my favorite thing about Luke is no matter what was going on I have these glasses on that like tilt down so we don't have um these are what are they called um shoot bunny bunny eyes bunny eyes yes good um so they tilt down you can get your hair colored this whole thing goes down it's really cool um Luke no matter what was going on he could make us laugh like he was here and Botox died and I yeah. bet you never thought you would laugh that day but somehow no, some yeah. way he made you laugh I wish he still lived here all the yeah, time me too and I that even came up as a Facebook memory is like he's so good to have around because you can be going through the biggest crisis and yeah. he'll make it light or start dancing like a jerk and yeah. you know make it fun mm -hmm. um what's some fun girl advice your mom's given you I don't know. You don't really give me girl advice. Anytime I, I bitch about someone, you just like, are like, uh, yeah, but you, you don't know what they're going through. And like, obviously I think about that, but it's like, sometimes <laughs> I just want to bitch about someone. I know. I, I have a problem where I'm always too compassionate about the other person, even when they're hurting you. I could be like, but this person ran over my dog. And she'd be like, but they were probably having a bad day. I'm like, clearly they had a, <laughs> were having a bad day, but they, did something really messed up I know I'm sorry I do that I just go right to I put that in my Instagram story today of like that guy from um, Halloween with the mask but you can give it you can gossip about stuff in your own life oh, you just don't sure. like to gossip about people other people's lives I it's being human <laughs> I get caught up in the moment no but I find all, myself but... being like that too like I get hot and uncomfortable if someone's talking about somebody but I can, I don't get like that with myself because I think I know my intentions aren't bad. Yeah, sometimes you just need to vent. Yeah. But also it's different with you. Like if a girlfriend came to me and was bitching about somebody, I probably would be like, fuck her, you know, whatever. But because you're my daughter and I feel responsible to teach you about life and like doing the right thing, that's probably why I, I go to that. So mm -hmm. it's different. Um, where do you both get your taste in fashion? I would say we have different tastes in fashion, For but sure. it overlaps yeah. some places. Yeah. I, I think we have a different version of the same things. Like you can definitely be prairie with, you know, a muumuu on and jewelry, but yeah. um, I, 
And I can be, you know, you're more of a simple dresser. You're also way more diverse than me. Like I, I think that a goal of mine all the time is to simplify my wardrobe and to like have a clear idea of what, how I want to dress. So why do you put so much pressure? Why can't you just wake up and say, I'm in the mood to be this today. That's what I do. Because sometimes it, I just feel like it stresses me out more where I'm like, oh, like this doesn't feel me. This doesn't feel like who I am. Whereas if I have something that if I curate a wardrobe that I love everything and it feels very me, then I'm happy. Okay. Again, I think that's Aquarius Pisces thing. <laughs> I have uh, many moods and I dress to those moods. I mean, for the most part, I'm in a moo moo and you now spiritual jewelry, but there's days that I want to, you know, wear jeans and like a more quote unquote fashionable blazer or something. But I think I'm pretty consistent. I'm more picky than you. Yes. I think that's the way to put it. For sure. I just, I, at this time in my life, I just want to be comfortable for real. Like that's yeah. all it is about comfort. I want soft materials. Like even yesterday I found the prettiest robe. Like it was so pleasing to the eye, but it was rough and so I'm like, I can't, I can't wear it because it's yeah. rough inside. I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no question. Just want to say she is absolutely gorgeous. Just like, Thank oh. you. It's very nice. Um, okay. So this kind of hones it in a little bit, but what was the most important spiritual slash life lesson your mother ever taught you? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. You don't teach me specific lessons. It's like a lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I'm always reminding myself of that I think I remind you of is like this too shall pass no matter what is happening it's going to pass like it's not you're not going to live in that feeling forever so I think I try to remind because I feel like I'm always constantly reminding myself of that so that's the one thing I probably would always try to remind you of I don't know it was interesting because I was talking about this in therapy this week and it's like our dynamic is interesting because you can tell me everything about your life but I'll never like make it personal like I can draw a boundary of like your how you feel and not let it affect my feelings in life but with you it's like because I'm your daughter that boundary is is so much harder for you of course because I want to fix it and make it right or teach you something about it yeah so there's a lot of stuff that I just never tell you that's not nice it's too stressful it makes it harder because of that boundary. I have to work on that then. But it's well, just no, but it, it's not like it's not like anybody thinks you should be better at it. It's understandably hard. But you could tell me the worst thing ever, and I'm still gonna sleep at night. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You're not gonna sleep that night if I tell you the worst thing ever happened no, to me. I'm not going to, but you should tell it to me because it's not your problem that I don't sleep. It's mine. No, but it becomes my problem because we're empathetic people. Wow, this is this needs a whole layer of therapy. Why? I, I honestly well, you know think we've that's never, like, okay. Yeah, it's of course it's okay. We've never done therapy together, which is interesting because I've asked you to do it because I do want to be a better mother. Like I'm learning every single day how to be a better mother. And I as I go through phases of my, my life, I mother differently. And it's interesting because from my perspective, if you tell me something so horrible and I try to stay calm, you're like, don't you care? Like, don't like give me a reaction. You, you and Dave have even said that to me, like, but you almost never give me a response that I, that makes, like, makes it better. Oh, that <laughs> so sucks. That's like... so terrible. <laughs> and, th- but also the reality is, is you're way more emotional than me. Yes. So there's also just a difference in personality and character traits. Like something could happen to me and it's going to bother you way more than it bothers me. Of course. So how is that beneficial to me to know that like it's a domino and it's make it's hurting you you know what I mean yeah I know but you have to be able to tell me everything I mean you tell me some pretty deep shit if there's stuff I don't know (laughs) at this point yeah there is oh god (laughs) all right we need to go to therapy together we do (laughs) I've been saying that for years not because there's anything wrong it's just because the sessions of the week because It just helps communicate when there's a third party there. You can say things that you normally wouldn't feel comfortable saying. Like, I just want to be better. It's not like I need to prove my point or anything. I just want to be better. And I I know a lot of therapy. I love therapy. I do too. Finding the right therapist as well. Of course. I have to date a few first. Yes. I've gone through many therapists that made things worse, but 
um, I love my therapist now, my EMDR person, my body worker, like it's a nice, really nice fit. And I think you're happy with who you work with too. Yeah, I love mine. Yeah, so yeah, I, Lexi, again, a Pisces Aquarius mix is very interesting, especially for a mother and daughter, because Pisces are constantly swimming in their emotions and are like, I feel bad for, and as you do, you know, if the mailman had a horrible day, it's going to make my day horrible. And you can imagine the impact my daughter having a horrible day has on me. And I get it. Like, you don't want to make my day horrible. Why would you do that? But that's what mothers do. There's a phrase my mom used to always say is, I mean, you're my only one, but you're only as oh, happy only as, as, happy as, as your saddest, saddest child. child. Yeah. Yes. Which is true. But um, I just think that everyone can improve relationships and therapy is a, a good therapist is a huge way to improve communication and uh, understanding. Yeah. Um, best advice Dina gave Lexi on how you keep your bond strong. I think, you know, like since you married Dave, it's become even clearer to us that we're kind of all we have is each other. You know, he has two kids. You only have me. That's not a very big family. So, you know, I think that the understanding that we all have, especially after what we've been through is like, no matter what happens, we have to stick together. Yeah. We'll have our times. We may not agree yeah. you know and stuff but at the end of the day we really have to work it out and mm -hmm. um figure it out um what's your favorite day night creams <laughs> it's like that's mm. um i like the one you gave me for christmas yeah that's bio biologic yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really like that one yeah and i want to try the lotion p50 Lotion P50 is amazing. It's um, amazing. I will. Post I use that. cosmetics products, and I've talked about this on my Instagram. But I had really bad perioral dermatitis during COVID for the first time in my life, and it was so uncomfortable. I didn't even want to leave the house. I looked like I had like eczema around my mouth, and ugh, it was terrible. And then I started seeing a facialist that kind of simplified my skincare routine, and now I use all cosmetics products, which are like not you know, harsh and they're not scented and I haven't had a flare up since. So I really, no, do your skin believe. really looks good. Yeah. I believe in them. But what I like about Lexi is she could have a full face of makeup on. It looks like nothing. Like <laughs> I don't wear makeup. And when I put it on, I feel like I have a mask on. Like you have, I saw you putting foundation on. It looks like nothing. Well, that was your foundation. So maybe it's just really <laughs> good foundation because I typically don't wear any, but I thought, you know, when you're on camera, you usually have to put a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but even your other makeup, like you experiment more product, like makeup, especially like you'll try yeah. something new or people will send you. Well, I'm stuff. trying to use all natural stuff. And I really do stand by Kosas and Ilya products. I love their products. I was just saying that this morning that their lip balm. Is yeah. Like the best I used to thing. carry them at the pop-up there. It's a mm -hmm. great product where obviously I always endorse natural is better. Yeah. Organic is better. Um, I'm trying to pop over some of these questions. How do you deal with negativity with family towards your mom? Oh God. Um, I think in the early stages, I used to play really neutral because I was still young and my relationship with my cousins was like fragile to me because, you know, I really grew up so embedded with them. They were the closest thing I ever had to a sibling. Like we lived in their house, you know, it was, it was really, really close relationships. Sometimes I think about like the memories when they would pick me up from school or the first time I shaved my legs, like all that stuff is still very, you know, happy, good times to me that I'll always, you know, think about. But, you know, as I got older and I had a, my own impression of how things were happening, I definitely slipped up and like said a few things online that, we all did. that I shouldn't have put online but it's hard it's hard when you feel like you don't have a voice and I felt like for a while my mom didn't have a voice so sometimes I would just interject because I know that she's not the best at confrontation herself mm -hmm. and although I'm not good at confrontation I'm a little bit better than you um but now it's just like we've kind of accepted, you know, the reality. There's always a hope for a brighter day. For but, sure. you know, 
This we're is... not ever looking to hurt anyone. Yeah. And I think that's, we've been steadfast from the first day with that. And like you said, we're human and sometimes we'll slip up. Um, but at, I hate the term at the end of the day, it's overused. But at the end of the day, we, we really there's hope for wish, a brighter day, yeah, but we, we wish accept it never the way happened, things are. It is, yeah. it is what it is. You have to accept the way things are. One of my favorite um, slogans that I've learned recently is, I shared this with you, expectations are premeditated resentments. So yes. I really try to not expect anything from anybody, good or bad. It's just like when something happens, I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. I don't expect them to be any better or any worse or whatever it is. And also there's the phrase that some people just don't have the same heart as you. And that's why they don't think the same. Um, so, you know, certain family members are a little bit harsher in their realities. And I think that's the theme where we're not. Yeah. I don't harsh. think that we, we have any strong opinions on anybody if anything you're just very hurt yeah yeah favorite memory with Dina from when you were little <laughs> this is a true moo I'm wearing today this is um Doris Vindia but it's a true like my grandmother with the Gavadi alarms used to wear this go ahead it's really hard to reminisce on memories because unfortunately I don't have any childhood photos of myself to like sit down at the counter and go through things so I really and when Lex let me clear that up she doesn't have any because they weren't taken they were taken from us <laughs> yeah yeah so we, I took yeah. plenty of photos I scrapbooked the shit out of her life you know from her belly button is in a scrapbook somewhere um but yeah I get that um but I would say there's a lot of good memories of, you know, driving with the top down and listening to music. Like once you had a convertible and there were specific albums, like we would always listen to Elton John and mm -hmm. John Legend. And yeah. um, I don't know. Do you have a specific memory? I think, I mean, those were like maybe like 11, 12, 13, yeah, I, like little, little, um, like my favorite thing to do with you is like, because all the other mothers on the block that we lived on were like, I call them, which there's nothing wrong with this, but there's wine moms who like, after the kids come home from school, want to sit and have a glass of wine with the moms while the kids play. And because you were only a child, I was more like, I had to keep you busy. So I can I also imagine because I'm an only child, they were probably very exhausted because like yes. everyone has like three kids. Well, I, would, I, would, one. I know, but I work too. And a lot of those moms didn't work, but I, I would take all the kids at the house, like the young kids. And I'm talking like when you were like three, and I'd make you grilled cheese and give you snacks and sit on the floor and make jewelry, crafts or whatever. And I was a very hands-on mom in that way when I wasn't working. I worked a lot, obviously. But when I wasn't working, like we would always make jewelry. Mm -hmm. And like, I was always looking for something to keep you busy because I couldn't say, go play with your sister. Like there wasn't a lot of yeah. that. But as you got older, I was like, go in your fucking room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so every age is a different like I always say I was the I am the best mom from birth to about nine and then after that I could probably use a lot of training <laughs> because like I'm really good with like little ones and babies and toddlers and like that age and like cuteness but once you start talking back I'm like I don't know how to handle it <laughs> not it <laughs> Alex career uh, what's your favorite perfume I don't wear perfume. Yeah, neither do I. I wear essential oils. Um, my Izzy Miyake, I hardly use it, but if I ever, ever, like maybe once a year, I'll put perfume on, it's Izzy Miyake. But other than that, I'm essential oils and my sprays and rituals I do every morning. What has been my greatest prayer for your daughter? Um, obviously, I just want her to be happy. I want her to find her purpose and her passion. And I believe that leads to happiness. So like you, we said before, you're in your 20s. This is when you're figuring it all out. And I hope to just be supportive while she does. How often are you guys with each other lately? I had just had a daughter and I hope we can be as close as you ladies. How often are we together, Lexi? <laughs> um, not often, but we also have very different schedules. Yes. And Lexi does not like, dri like driving to Orange County. And it's very difficult for me to go because I have a house full of I think my mom needs. has been to my apartment twice. I've lived there for years. That is years. so not true. 
That is true. That is not true. Like First the, of all, I've, I've set up times. your apartment with you. I've set up birthday parties there. I've been there to pick you up. I've only slept over once because it freaks me out. You've been there like less than five times. Yeah. So she comes here and she'll <laughs> spend the weekend. It's very hard for me to get to West Hollywood. It really is. I mean, I even go to some, some of my body workers. He's in bed. They're in Venice. And I have to like go while my housekeeper's here and go and run right back before she leaves because these dogs run, they rule my life. They rule my life. They really do. I mean, I went away for one night with you last night and who peed on the rug, who shit on the rug upstairs because they're all mad that I'm gone. It's my own fault. They're addicted to me. Um, I'm really congested. Okay. I think we only have a couple more. How long? I, we didn't see the start time, so I don't know how long we're going. Um, all right. So any questions you want to add or information? Do we cover? There's more, but maybe we'll do a second. We'll do a part two. I don't know. Um, anything you want the world to know about Lexi Iwanu? Maybe that George Hadra Pistoli is not your father. <laughs> <laughs> The rumor of who dad, Lexi's dad was. That's my uncle. That's her uncle. That's like, not her not father. Not even my blood uncle. But it's like on Wikipedia, I That's believe. So yeah, it's so weird. You know what? But I think my dad would rather he take yes. the brunt of the press than my actual <laughs> yeah. dad. My dad's yes. very low key. Yes. Um, I think that's it. I think we covered a lot of the basis of our relationship and um, we're going to make a therapy for us. <laughs> Let me know. All right, guys, we'll talk to you this next time. Penny? Oh, yeah. This is my grand daughter, Penny. This Penny. Is Penny. Penny is Lexi in a dog form. She gives <laughs> zero shits. Lexi tries to all warm up to her and hug her. And Penny's like, yeah, not today. <laughs> we have the same birthday. She's yes. the love of my life. She's an Aquarius as well. With She's another very chill. <laughs> all right.